30 milligrams. Guys, I know we're up here and we're performing, we're doing our thing on the stage, but the truth of the fact is, it's not about us, it's about Christ. And if we're up here right now, it's only by His grace that we're up here. I was not always a Christian, but because Christ found me, I now am. And He's transforming my life. You hear the words, He's transforming my life. And He continues to work in my life and, and get rid of the things from my past in order to make me like His Son, Jesus Christ. And we all have trials, we all, we all have those good days and those bad days, but as long as we keep focusing on the Christ, He will always give us the strength. Growing up as a child, I never had much. I was raised in a very abusive household. My father was an alcoholic, and as a child, violence was the concept in my house. And witnessing my, my father coming in the house and beating up on my mom, dragging her from her hair downstairs, something that children shouldn't be seeing, but this is what I was exposed to. So I thought everything needed to be, you know, everything was a violent, cruel world. As I got into high school, I met friends, people that were just like me. We had the same interests, we had the same pain, we liked to do the same stuff. So we got into that, I got close to them and we just began to do the bad things. Hanging together, drinking, smoking weed, whatnot. Eventually, age 14, my father disappeared. And I met two friends who said they were going to take me and they were going to change my mentality. They were a lot older than me. They were only 14 years old. But they took me in. I went to go live with them. And I left my house. And they began to train my mentality. They said I had hustling potential and they were going to teach me the ropes. So they began to teach me how to, they connected me first off with cocaine, ecstasy, you name it, counterfeits, whatever. And at that age, I see my first gun. And I realized where my life was going. But I didn't care. I absorbed it. And they began to teach me how to bag the cocaine, how to move it, how not to get caught. And I liked that because it was easy money. I needed to make money and I didn't want to work. Forget that. I wanted to make quick cash. And I got deeper into that world. I was arrested multiple times as a, as a young adult, as a, as a youth, sorry. As a youth, I was arrested multiple times. And this is where my life was going. Breaking enters, running away from police in a vehicle. I was just showing my, my past charges to some of my friends recently. And I'm like, wow. I look back at this and I'm like, wow, Lord. I really was a mess. Where was I going? And I had no hope. There was no hope. It was the same thing every day. Party life, drinking up, smoking up, whatever. Eventually, that friend who was training me up disappeared. I didn't know what happened to him. He just disappeared. I found out later that he was arrested and charged with some gun charges. And, but I lost connection to him. I didn't have that mentor anymore. So I started to do my own thing. I developed my own connections. I began to go from east to west. I was raised in Scarborough. Came to the West End. It was all over the, the GTA. And I bumped into a friend who looked different. There was something different about him. I hadn't seen him had in a while. And I said, what happened to you? He's like, you, man, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I'm like, woo, like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, I started laughing at this guy. I'm like, ah, you gave your life to Jesus. Type of thing. And I have my cigarette in my hand. And he stands here right now. This is the man over here, the guy who used to be with Christ. And he told me, he's like, come to the youth meeting. He's like, come to the youth meeting. He tricked me, guys. <laughs> I always say this, he's like, come to the youth meeting, and after you're done, we'll drink, we'll smoke with you, but come to the meeting. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, bro, I don't know if this is for me, or whatever, I started to come. As I started to come, I came every Saturday, and I started to sit down. I started to drink my OE, I started to smoke, and I was starting to gag, and I looked at my at this beer bottle I had in my hand, and I'm like, it started to be pointless to me. I'm like, what am I doing? It's a waste. So then I went to a conference, and as I was at the conference, I'll be honest, I was going through myself, drugs. <laughs> I had tablets of ecstasy on me, but I had a different plan for my life. And it's amazing. Because when I got there, I see people worshiping. It was 2007 of April, of the 7th. Everyone was worshiping, and I'm like, Want that. Why can't I have it? How come these guys can worship and I can't have this? I'm so mad. 
So I, I went, I left. I see people getting crushed in the head, falling. I hear shanda la la over here. I'm like, I'm out of here. <laughs> but I went outside and he stood up there. And I'm like, I started talking to God. I'm like, Lord, my God, if I do my legs, you will let me down. And I took off those pills and I threw them on the ground. I stepped on them. And I threw my weed and I threw my cigarettes. And from that point on, I, I accepted Christ. And he's been changing my life, guys. Right? I just found my father one year ago. I had to see him for eight years. I just found him last year. I'm finishing school next week. It's amazing. Please, please, guys, listen up. I thank you. I, I thank God for what he's doing. But honestly, no glory to me, all glory to God. Because if he can take something like me, a piece of garbage, and turn it into something precious, then that's the purpose. That's the point. The glory to Jesus Christ. Rebuilding, 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 rebuilding.